Welcome back, and I'd like to talk about the interface and the differences. Now, this will be repeated in other videos you're going to watch in this series, but I want to give you a quick overview of where things are so you can get going quick and some word differences, some terminology. So let's talk about that. So taking this interface in Studio One from left to right and then top to bottom. On the left-hand side, we have the track dialog window. You would see that in Pro Tools. It's very similar, and it's, it's just a case of just hitting this line here and you'll see the tracks showing up there then. And let's then move to the right hand side. Now this is an event. In Pro Tools it's called a clip or in an old version of Pro Tools it's called a region but in Studio One it's called an event. And events that are then audio events they would show up in the pool here. Now that's what you call the clip list in Pro Tools. So we have events and they live in the pool. Now the pool is part of a much bigger browser, so in Pro Tools you have the browser separated, you have Workspace, which is the browser for your loops, and that's in the same browser here. But what you want to do, if you want to find the clips that you're working with, or the events as we call them, you open the browser and you go to pool, and there they are all showing up there. If you want to find something that's in the pool, when it gets busier and busier and busier, you can right mouse click on the audio, and this is in another video as well, and come down to the menu item here, select in pool, and then it will show you that event in the pool. So that's the pool and where the events live. So let's close that for a while. So the next thing is the mix window, which in Studio One is called the console. So if we hit mix here, or if we press F3 on our keyboard, we get the mix window. Now the difference straight away, as you can see, it's partly built in. So we have a one window system. Pro Tools, you have a two window system, which you go edit to mix, edit to mix. Now if you prefer that way of working, you can still undock that and have that as your separate mix window. You also make it full screen if you want a big screen as well, like that. But you can also, of course, make it the right size to, to match this one as well. So you can resize that browser as well. So if you prefer the Pro Tools way of working, if you just do that and you've then got the two windows you can switch between just by pressing F3. Now one tip I want to give you as well is if you jump between Studio One and Pro Tools and go to Studio One, keyboard shortcuts, you come to this window, which is also in the general settings. If you come to the bottom right here, you can choose a different keyboard setup. You can choose Pro Tools, and then that will map all your keyboard shortcuts from Pro Tools straight away. If you don't want to keep jumping between two sets of keyboard shortcuts, which can drive you a bit crazy sometimes. Now the transport is built into the bottom of the window. It's not on dockable either. You can't make it float, so it's fixed there. And the transport settings are all pretty straightforward, but this is more than just a transport. It gives you things like how much time you've got left. I've got a big drive, it's got 16 days of recording. It's at 44.1, it gives me my performance monitor, it gives me my MIDI monitor if I go and press on that as well. You can see MIDI information. I've got seconds, got the bars, we've got the transport, we've got loop functions here. If we right mouse click on that, we've got some new features from 3.2, things like loop follows edit selection and return to start and stop and things like that, and it will give you the shortcuts as well that you need. Then we've got things also such as the pre-roll and stuff when you're doing drop-ins, and we've got pre-count for the metronome, got the metronome setting there as well, and if we hit the wrench icon there, we can do a metronome setup and choose our different sounds and how that would work as well. You can also render your metronome. If, you, if you're not gonna be changing any tempo in the track, you could render the metronome across Studio One, so you've got an audio version of the metronome if you wish to do that. Then we have our tempo of our track, our time signature, and also a volume control. If you haven't got the mix window open, you can change the volume control and also the channel width there. That's stereo or mono. So going to the top then, at the top here, that's our automation setup, and uh, we're not gonna go into that in detail now, but that allows us to set any kind of automation very quickly from anything. If something's appearing in here that you've changed, such as the setting in a plugin or the setting in an instrument, then the minute you grab this hand and drag it down, you can drag that in as either a separate automation lane or an automation lane upon an instrument you're already using. Then we have a toolbar here. This is the smarter arrow tool. And then the other tools, if you hover over them, you get your names for them. Uh, there's a nice mute tool that's very nice. You can just run very quickly across audio and just mute it like that and just mute it on and off. Then there's the Ben tool, which would be called Warp Audio or Elastic Audio in Pro Tools, and that allows you to put bend markers within this audio here. And that's also tied in with when you're using the audio bend drop down there. This is where you can actually set it up. That's what you would call Elastic Audio in Pro Tools. You can actually set the bend markers on a track, and it's simply a case of coming back here, choosing the audio, go bend markers, analyze it, and then you can set a threshold there, 
and then you could do all the other kind of stuff you could do with flexible audio. So you can turn those bend marks on and off if you don't want to see them there, but they'll still, that doesn't actually turn them off in terms of them working, it just means that visually you don't see them anymore. And you could choose things like the type of algorithm you're using as well. Coming back, this is a very useful function for those new to Studio One. If you hit that question there, then as you hover over stuff, it will tell you down here a dialogue about what the different things do as you hover over them. The strip silence, you'll find that there, it's not in a menu, it's there up on the toolbar. We then have quantize, and that's where we can open the quantize panel. Now if you want to do quantize, you don't have to go to audio bend first. If we just come here and grab something like that, and then we go quantize, we choose a quantize value, and we press apply, it will add the audio bend and then go through. And then it will show you how it's modified the audio. Then we have the macro toolbar where you can apply very complex macros to do tasks very quickly. Then we have the quantize values. We have a time base at the top there. So if you want to see it in seconds and minutes, you can see it in seconds and minutes, or samples, or bars, or frames. Now snapping is very flexible in Studio One. We have several settings that can make things very easy to move around and get lined up. We have adaptive bar, quantize, or frame snapping. And then we have snap to cursor and loop, snap to events, snap to grid, and relative grid. And we can turn those on and off. You don't have to have just one on. So we can have several at the same time. Then we have the cursor follows edit position and auto scrolling. So if this was zoomed out a bit, it would then auto scroll. And then we have cursor follows edit position. So if we're actually editing, and then the cursor drops in there, if we turn that off then, then the cursor will always stay in the same position, even if I'm editing here. My cursor is going to stop from the start there instead. We have the arranger and scratch pad, which are very useful and very powerful. This is where you can basically arrange two songs in the same song, or ten songs in the same song. It's entirely up to you. Then finally, we have edit video as well. We can have a video playing if it's loaded, and then we can actually show and hide that video. So there we are. That's an overview of the interface within Studio One. Thanks for watching. Thank you.